Welcome to an episode of the Sonoran Woodshop. I'm excited about today's project because of the historical aspect of it. I'm making a reproduction of a napkin ring from the USS Shangri-La CV-38. The Shangri-La was a U.S. naval ship commissioned in 1944. The ship's name was derived from a comment that President Roosevelt made referencing a fictional place, Shangri-La, in the James Hilton novel Lost Horizon. The alphanumeric designation for this ship, CV-38, identifies it as a U.S. naval aircraft carrier. The C stands for cruiser and the V stands for voler, which means to fly. The Shangri-La was the 38th ship built with this designation. I begin this project with a blank that is two and a half inches wide by two inches tall. The length will be determined by how many rings you want to make. To keep myself oriented, I designate the flat section of the napkin ring as the reference base and make all of my measurements based on this reference. Across the width of the blank, I mark the center point at an inch and a quarter, and then extend this line perpendicular to the reference base. I flip the blank over and repeat this process on the other end. From the reference face, I make a mark at three quarters of an inch. This will be done on both ends. I then mount the blank between centers using the reference marks, creating an off-center turning. Since the blank is off-center, the lathe will start to vibrate as you increase speed. There is a threshold for when the vibrations start, so we increase the speed slowly until I reach that threshold. I then back the speed off slightly until the vibrations stop. I'm using the spindle roughing gouge to turn the blank round. I'm shooting for a diameter of 2 and 3 eighths of an inch and use a set of calipers to check my progress. Along the length of the blank, I measure out an inch and an eighth for each napkin ring, leaving about a quarter inch between rings. This allows enough room for my parting tool to prevent any binding. Using the skew chisel, I make a small cut at each reference line. This cuts the wood fibers enough to prevent tear out when I'm using the parting tool to separate each ring. As you can see, I'm left with a nice clean edge where I cut the fibers and the edge is frayed where I didn't. With each ring defined, I make reference marks at an eighth of an inch from each end of the napkin ring. These marks define the outer beads. I also draw a center line for reference. I use the skew chisel to create a notch on the inside edge of the outer beads. The depth of these notches is about 3 seconds of an inch. I use the flat section of the blank to check the uniformity of each notch and make adjustments where needed. I use the skew chisel to create a shallow bead on the center section of the napkin ring, starting at the center line and turning the bead round into the notches on either side. I prefer using the skew chisel here as it allows me to get right into those notches, creating a nice clean line although a spindle gouge could also be used. I round the beads over using the point of the skew. At this point, I'm done turning the napkin rings, so I bring the sections between each ring down to about 3 quarters of an inch. I remove the blank from the lathe and find the halfway point between the reference face and the top of the napkin ring, and mark this point on both ends. Next, I find the center point across the reference base and draw a perpendicular line up the end of the blank that intersects with the previous mark. These lines mark the center point for the through holes in the napkin rings. I mount the blank between centers using the new center point and turn a tenon that will be used to mount in the chuck. Mounting the blank in the chuck allows me to accurately drill the center hole in the napkin rings. Using an inch and three eighths Forstner bit mounted in the tailstock with a Jacobs chuck, I advance the quill and bore out the center hole in each napkin ring. Since the section between each ring is smaller than the Forstner bit, the ring is parted off once you drill through. With all of the rings drilled out and separated, 
I begin sanding the flat sections using a sanding disc I made for the lathe. I sand up to 320 grit. I use my spindle sander to sand the inside of the rings, however a forcer bit leaves a fairly decent surface, making hand sanding fairly easy. I added a chamfer to the inside ring on the router table as a decorative effect, but a simple round over with sandpaper looks good too. I then sand the entire napkin ring, starting at 180 grit, and work my way up to 320. I wanted to try a different finishing technique, so I decided to add a walnut stain, which helped me achieve the effect that I was going for. To finish off the napkin rings, I applied three coats of mineral oil. So like I said, I really like this project because of the historical aspect of it. My aunt's father was actually given this napkin ring as a plank owner aboard the Shangri-La. The term plank owner is given to servicemen and women in the U.S. Navy who were crew members during the commissioning of that particular ship. It gives them bragging rights to the ownership of one of the planks on the ship's main deck. It's a term that I was actually unfamiliar with before I started this project, which I think is pretty cool. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.